Ooh. Should we do like power pose again? Power pose? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always feel like it helps me like get nerves out. <laughs> Welcome back to Unread, where we're sharing our thoughts about the past, present, and future of social as a team who thinks about social's influence every day. My name is Helis Missouri. I am a senior brand copywriter on our brand creative team, and I am addicted to DMing my coworkers about every little niche social trend there is. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm so true. Greg Rakiski. I am a social media strategist here on the team at Sprout, and I love receiving those types of DMs all throughout <laughs> the workday from people like Helen. <laughs> I am Olivia Jepson, our senior social media strategist on our social team, and I too love to receive and send those messages, <laughs> and I feel like specifically and mostly like unhinged ways the chaos yes it's, yeah. it's slack <laughs> yeah. it's instagram it's tiktok yeah. it's, sometimes they're just text messages too like yeah. i'll yeah. message you anywhere i will we'll find you exactly yeah. <laughs> i feel like i want to send you my address and you can send me like snail mail of like did like you actual, see this yeah, yes. snail mail like, write just, a letter. like a newsletter yeah. about like all the all the cool things that are happening on tiktok this week yes. in your mailbox yes. yes all right friends if you're new or tuning in this is what we do every episode but i want to hear from where what side of social are all of you on right now the side of TikTok that I'm actually on right now is Succession because it the finale oh, just yes. happened. But I was DMing with a friend about the show. The first thing on my For You page was so such a drastic departure from what we were just talking about. It was like, come with me to a sewer rave. I'm like literally the two sides of my TikTok <laughs> personality. Like the duality of my TikTok presence is like sewer rave or Succession. <laughs> I'm like deep on skincare TikTok right now for some mm, reason. Ooh. Learning all about double cleansing and when you should cleanse with oil and water cleansers. So nothing, yeah. <laughs> nothing important stuff. Yeah, I mean, you I gotta keep those skin cells rejuvenated. Are people still like putting Vaseline all over their face? It was called slugging. Slugging. Right? slugging? Yeah. 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 Is I think thing? the pendulum <laughs> has like, swung. What? And dermatologists are like, don't do that, maybe. The last time I know I talked about handbag like restoration, mm -hmm. I feel like it's like snowballed into like car detailing where like people Ooh. are like really like deep cleaning their cars and there's like brushes and like frothing of soap and like getting in the cup holders it's almost like the same satisfaction as like the rug cleaning tiktok yes. if you've ever gotten oh, those. oh yeah i definitely kind of like the same i've definitely yeah. gotten caught in some rug cleaning yeah. videos like a loop of just re-watching those videos yeah there's something really satisfying about that so i can imagine with cars it's very like cathartic especially if you have a car which i do not so i i, I have to live vicariously <laughs> yeah. through the tiktoks yeah i think it's really funny that we're talking about like cars because over the past two years we've been in the market so my best friend and i who i live with and we share a car um we got one two years ago in august and then we ended up getting into an accident that totaled it and so covid car buying has been stressful but i've been thinking about how the car industry and socials impact are tied because we we went like PhD level research into like all of the cars. We were not like tied to any brand. But one thing like I didn't find a lot of like either myself or Kamara using is social media, you know, to help us on the buyer journey. Oh, interesting. And so thinking, okay, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is, like, where was there a specific platform you were searching the most on or just Googling things? Was Reddit helpful? What were you doing? Once we got whittled down, it was like Subaru and Toyota. And so we ended up with a Toyota both times. So I was looking on Twitter. I was looking Looking at their accounts and it wasn't anything that like helped solidify the decision like what i really cared about was like one the buying experience which i i would love to dive into about like what that looks like today because i am a person who wants to avoid the salespeople as much as possible yeah. love them i know it's a Same. ecosystem in our world but it makes me anxious i mean for me when i got my car i did go to social quite a bit for research it's a little bit different though because i went into like the whole process knowing that i wanted another subaru the stuff that i was getting was like way more targeted toward the specific subaru that i was looking at which was like a cross trek and like the car that i currently had which was like an impreza oh so that's and, interesting so you weren't yeah. just getting subaru ad like targeted with subaru ads you were getting targeted yeah. with like the specific vehicle of subaru that yeah. you were interested yeah. in okay interesting. yeah 
some of like the Subaru like lifestyle that everyone kind of knows about too. Like I rock climb. And so I was getting a lot of that because I'm already on that side of TikTok as well. So it felt like it was a very like natural evolution into like the car buying experience well and hell is like i know you don't have a car like what what does that look like for you on social (laughs) i don't get targeted with ads i still get the sydney sweeney ford bronco ads yes so (laughs) i i still regularly even though i am not in the demographic that i think any of those marketers would be trying to reach i i'm still inundated with these these ads yeah well because i mean you watch euphoria i feel like even though you aren't like buying a car have a license so you kind of are still within that demographic because it's still building brand affinity and like you already like have like previous knowledge a little bit of like the vintage bronco that like she's restoring which is kind of yeah i learned like you already know about that so it's like the awareness (laughs) is like working it's i guess it is um they kind of got me from that angle damn yeah (laughs) i love the sid sweeney moment i think that's an Mm -hmm. interesting like way to tap in creators and i think we could unpack that but just like how we make such an important decision for a car that is so long lasting like (laughs) our goal with the toyota is to have it hopefully for a long 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 time what are your thoughts on like how it's impacting social and the buying journey on social the accessibility of information that's on social i rarely even had to go to like a website to make a decision on anything i know that like probably my next like three or four cars will be a subaru because i'm not really interested in anything else it's just like a lifestyle fit they partnered with like rei and like all of that (laughs) is such like a lifestyle and like brand fit me having the loyalty of subaru and just like continuously getting that like accessibility of information of like what's new with like their products and like what what they're releasing that's kind of like the experience that I'm drawn to and I think is really fascinating because it's such a long game. I think it's interesting that you say as like a car consumer, you're looking out for like new releases and stuff and like kind of the latest thing from a brand that you're loyal to from the outside as somebody who like doesn't own or seek out that stuff. I think of car ads as just like TV, they live on TV. Yes. And then on social, I think of it as like quiet marketing. A hot take like for brands where they could really lean in for to pull in folks like me is not necessarily marketing, but content to bring in the people to tip over the needle. Like, hey, here are some of those values because I really yeah. didn't get served. As a buyer, is that what you want though? Like, do you want the brand sharing that information or would you rather find that information from like other sources? I love that question because I don't know exactly the answer. I think I could be swayed because some of the research we did when we were looking for the car was directly on the websites comparing features. But what I was missing Mm -hmm. is like a look through. And I think that's where auto brands like having more content. Yeah, that's a good point. Here's this car and some of the features. And I think I was looking at like Mercedes Benz and they're like, swipe right. And here's a glimpse of you in this. And I'm like, well, I don't got Mercedes Benz money yet. So um, maybe if we could do that with like a Toyota or something, (laughs) but I do like- Aspirational. Literally, yes. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) it's like the long game again. I mean, all of these brands are legacy brands, right? So like a lot of these like- long game conversations especially when it comes to social like apply outside of this specific industry also they're seeding it so early now with people they're like yeah. she's 32 but maybe in 10 <laughs> years she'll <laughs> she'll get her license <laughs> we're rooting for you Helen. not these car brands being my biggest supporter building a content strategy for probably one of the longest games out there because like I am also looking yeah. for a car that's sustainable. I want it to last for X amount of years. And if it does that, then I'll be more loyal. If we can get those 200 plus miles that everyone talks about and it's still running pretty smoothly, like that'll have my loyalty. Yeah. I think that's such a like underrated opportunity too is like mm-hmm. building communities around those brands. When I was researching like, best features longest like here i've had this car these this rev4 or this outback from subaru for x amount of years and it has 300 and some thousand yeah. miles um yeah that's actually really smart i love the fact so much that that car honked in the Did middle you, of okay, that okay, conversation so you that, right? the hell is like <laughs> yeah no it really was like get in like <laughs> let's go get your license oh it's ford they're listening i feel like yeah. that was a targeted ad I think 
a lot of car brands probably have like a long ways to go on social. I know we keep mentioning like this like Ford and Sydney Sweeney example, but like mm-hmm. I think what's interesting at Ford like on their TikTok like has a lot of very like traditional what you would expect like car marketing. She started Sid's garage and was already like restoring this like Ford, like vintage Ford Bronco because she like has this hobby as like a mechanic. They tapped into a story that already existed. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So smart. and that's so, interesting. But like historically, cars have been such like a quote unquote like bro thing to like be interested in, yeah. and like she has this like yeah skill as a mechanic and is just like sharing her experience. Like, it made like the car enthusiast like lane of social and just like in general like more accessible to other people. The brand is able to like tap into an audience that it may not have been like super aware or super tuned into that car brand it's a smart play because like even victoria paris like yeah she was driving down the road or something and found this like vintage uh ford mustang i love victoria paris i saw like the ford ads and i just like i was like oh cool but like kept swiping (laughs) victoria if victoria is talking to me about cars i'm suddenly interested How do you think the rise of creators has, like, impacted the larger car buying experience? It really is, like, quiet influencing because it's it's not even about influencers doing a sponsored ad. It's just seeing what car they're driving sometimes. Just seeing how it fits into their lifestyle suddenly makes it just another product that I want to incorporate into my life like anything else like i'm not paying attention to what celebrities are driving no but i watch creators online every single day we follow these creators because there's something about their lifestyle that we connect to or we find aspirational it's like the evolution of like what we were talking about with like car ads because it's always about like some kind of emotion or like build a family and like drive this car and have it for like the entire time that your kids are growing up or Subaru with adventure or Jeep with adventure but I feel like with creators it's meeting like new consumers in that moment putting my like strategist hat on for this finding the right creators right like looking at oh these fit our values do they already have that brand of car and loyalty for us how can we work with them to elevate that in their content it really is almost more about seeing it and how it fits into their life and like noticing it yourself versus having them make a special video about it they just have to like be on camera and every comment will be where'd you get that shirt where did you get that hat literally i've seen people ask victoria paris where her white socks are from yeah yeah yes brands should trust that creators can sell without Mm -hmm. it having to be like some kind of manufactured deal if you're a marketer for an auto brand you have to know your data in so many different and deep ways who are your current customers and what are your aspirational customers too we know the current purchasing behaviors of gen z this is how technically consumer behavior changes here's these macro and micro economic factors finding the creators that truly are already living the values of your car. That is not easy keeping up with these trends. I can definitely see the challenges that poses too as like marketers. Can we think of any examples of car brands that we know of that have really like actually nurtured relationships with their customers in a way that's like really great or unique? Jeep is always one that I put up on kind of a pedestal of like, I wish I had that life where I could just like drive on the beach with it. Yeah, Jeep life. And Jeep actually really has a strong one. They have a campaign that was called My Jeep Story as well as hashtag Jeep Family. All of these examples that I'm sharing are leaning into a very consistent value prop for their brand. Um, And I like the Jeep Family is like they're, they, leaned into a friends and family discount my jeep story was a video and then they pulled through some of those lines to social and there was another one of a creator i forgot zach king who 2017 did an activation yeah with subaru he's an illusionist um and he flipped signs around and that just felt very like that didn't feel ick the through line for building that customer relationship is like making it feel authentic 
being upfront that it is a big investment and so making sure you make the right decision but then once you're a part of this community you're welcome and we want to sustain you i think one of the things the auto industry does really well is that brand loyalty that we've talked about what i'd love for the future to hold is like a little bit more unexpected ways to bring people in who are like me and can be convinced either way i think the other thing too about like the brands that you mentioned like all of them even off of social and before this like had very strong communities there's like the jeep wave or subaru owners like subaru just has like such a loyal like fan slash customer base already so it's just like translating those into like a digital world olivia is such a super stan i I am it's like kind of embarrassing (laughs) and i've literally only had like two of them but i even some of the subaru community building stuff that they do off of social and like they have like badges of ownership you put it where like the subaru logo is on the back of your car like you can get them where it's like my first subaru or second subaru or like 15th subaru oh and it's like what are the activities that you do in your Subaru so there's like little badges almost where it's like a national parks badge or a hiking oh, badge or things I like that. that it kind of keeps you coming back for more because you're like I can order my new badge yeah. and it like tells you something <laughs> about that. the other Subaru yeah drivers. yeah That's it's like a little cute. personal like see I like that I like little subtle nods to like the subtle ways that these like big legacy brands can kind of create community based on how the world is becoming so influenced by like the tiktokification of everything there's an opportunity to use more emerging tech like ai to level up the personalization from these brands like seeming accessible yes yeah a Mm -hmm. random tiktok Mm -hmm. and there's a two second mention of a brand but they find it and they engage with that i love seeing that and i think that's so important like a part of the buying journey because then it makes you feel the brand is a little bit more humanized i love that it's not just humanization though it is like the assurance that this brand is also paying attention to the same things you pay attention to they have listening tools that are kind of helping them guide them to content like this that just even briefly mentions their brand Mm -hmm. but if you're in the same places that your consumers or prospects are in they they're in tune with what i'm all in tune with when i see brands in the same spaces that i'm in it makes me feel like connected exactly yeah maybe this is just because like we work in social but like Like i always talk about like the person yeah the person on the other side and i'm like oh that's so cool that like this person that works for this brand is like in the same space We've talked a lot uh, about some of these like prominent brands and their values. To hit this home, who's ready for a little game? Let's do it. Introducing today for you all is a game called Too Fast, Too Curious. Cue the game music. Such a good day. Yeah. So good. (laughs) (laughs) So in this game, shout out Mall. (laughs) Yeah. For the intro of this, maybe it's like Mall's face, like in a car. And I hope like sunglasses slide down on (laughs) her face. So as part of Too Fast, Too Curious, instead of focus on trust and family here, we want to focus on trust and brand identity through the eyes of AI. So we did some setup to get us here today. We use Mid Journey, an AI program, and we really wanted to see whether AI understood and could translate the identity from well-known auto brands and accurately capture their essence. So here's the prompt that I use. Please create a full digital advertisement for the insert auto brand here. The purpose of the ad should be to convince people to buy a insert auto brand vehicle and fully embody the insert auto brand identity and be differentiated from competitors. So what we're all going to do is we're going to view the images of each of these mid journey created ads one at a time, and we're going to react thumbs up if they hit the mark, thumbs down if they miss the mark. All right. This one is Cadillac. So, let us all view this. Okay. Okay. Initial thoughts, reactions? I feel like this is a Cadillac ad I've seen before. It kind of says, like, subdued luxury. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good... That's a good description. What's he holding? I don't don't know. know. Yeah, did AI mess up the hand? I think they did. But something about this, like, the the Cadillac, like zooming through a bridge and like everything's a blur that's very that feels accurate you know Mm -hmm. um final verdict thumbs up or thumbs down for cadillac Um, i think thumbs up i think it got it i think generally thumbs up ai gets brownie points for fitting a customer to the yeah 
to the branding. Next link coming at you, we have Volkswagen. Thoughts? The, for the top two feel like it like really nailed it that bottom corner that right corner yeah I don't, something about seeing a vw van in a cityscape yeah. feels wrong i feel like i've never seen a vw van in no. a city i think it's cool that it geographically it put this car in the context of california yeah i mean with the exception of the cityscape one like tying back to like some of the things we've already talked about of like fitting in within the lifestyle the top two i feel like really hit that yeah. like yes. on the mark yeah yeah like the bottom two, it's like more darker. And like, I, I yeah. just think of when I think of like a Volkswagen, especially the van, like happy, cheery road trip. Like it looks like the VW van is like tornado chasing. Yeah. <laughs> and which I don't know if that car is built for that. I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> so final verdict. I'm giving it a thumbs down because it only. Yeah. I'm going to give it a thumb for me. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. got a 50%. So I yeah. guess I have to give it a thumbs down because of yeah. that. But Same. but the fifty percent it did nail it nails. All right. So the next one is Jeep. Here you go. Let's open those links. I feel like this is the one that like across the board feels the most like accurate to me. And this is the only one I've seen so far that used two different types yeah. of Jeeps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Whereas... I don't. Need, I wouldn't have even recognized the bottom left as a Jeep. <laughs> Is that just me? I don't know cars. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's or... I think so. <laughs> okay. So I love that it, the Cherokee is the one that's in the city because it's more, I guess, like more of like a oh, like a everyday car. SUV, whereas like the Wranglers oh. are like all of the ones that are like in the adventure, like camping kind of zone. I do like that it solidly put Jeeps in like an adventure context jeep could basically literally like export these and make them ads also unanimously thumbs up Unan- for jeep? i think thumbs up yeah, yeah. i think yeah. they did it i'm there <laughs> all right our last one is bmw okay since this is the last one i'm annoyed that they only pulled men like yeah. why i cannot imagine that's terrible bmw in this setting at all no <laughs> yeah i'm also annoyed that it's just like all men like speaking of men do we all see the like ghost man oh yeah (laughs) like where did that guy come from i think the the most accurate one i feel like is the bottom left the bottom left is the only one that feels like an ad yeah i don't think ai totally captured uh bmw's characterization here yeah. as a brand so i think that's a a thumbs down yeah thumbs Thumbs down down. overall winner jeep yeah i think so yeah 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 vin diesel doesn't have anything on this so thanks <laughs> for tuning in let us know your thoughts below on too fast too curious insert like fast car noises <laughs> <laughs> is there anything missing in the car buying experience from social that brands could capitalize on but they're not even if you're excited about buying a car you still have to talk to the salesperson do the mm-hmm. negotiations yeah. all of those things what pain points in that process can social like solve for before you even have to talk to a person social customer care like so bots many, yeah. like so many things mm-hmm. like that that could just like make that whole process more seamless the brands have a good job of connecting us to the vehicles themselves there's not a connection to our local dealerships you know mm-hmm. and like a couple episodes ago we talked about like book talk and barnes and noble and they have their franchises locally on like social media and tiktok like i would love that rather than what i deem as sometimes inauthentic like local car ads on the radio like i would feel much more comfortable going into that situation and like oh i've seen her like i want to talk to you about this car experience yeah so i think like, like yeah let social reinvent the car salesman I want to see brands really like tap into like the world they're serving more. You could actually sell us your brand more if you focus less on the product sometimes. And so like I want to see maybe a car company talking about public transportation and what people are doing. A lot of like what we see with the auto industry is super predictable. How can these like big legacy brands like almost like change it up and shake it up a little bit? I love when I see like mini documentaries from yeah. or, like video essay type things from brands. I'm thinking like Patagonia, REI, mm-hmm. like brands. I feel like they do a lot of that. So I want to see more of that. And I would love to see that from like, especially from yeah. like legacy brands. 
you're kind of keeping up with the current conversation. There are like some brands are like disrupting the space a little bit. I mean, even if we were thinking about like Uber or Lyft, like how did that change like transportation and also like Zipcar too, yeah. making like transportation more accessible? There is like some movement there, but it I feel like from legacy brands specifically, yeah, like leaning in more to like their values, more to like awareness plays, more to like telling their customer stories and like and less in traditional ads. I love that yeah. challenge of you know, like speaking of Lyft, Lyft, I just saw they launched a new long form video series where with Bob the Drag mm. Queen leaning on Cash Cab and it's like a bi-weekly on their YouTube. Like, I love those types of things. It's yeah, unexpected. I love that. Um, it's a mini show episode. Like, I think that could have been such a great partnership with like Lyft and a car brand and, and Bob that's the why Drake. That's mm-hmm. why I'm a Lyft girly. There is an opportunity with social content to create something net new and kind of like lead change. Whereas like you are kind of limited in a box on so on like traditional advertising platforms like television. But social is a playground. You can do something that you haven't even seen yet. It doesn't have to fit into a norm or make people comfortable. It can be its own thing. Totally agree, Hell is, And that brings us to the end of our fourth episode. So if you agree or disagree with our takes, we definitely want to hear from you. Leave us a comment and tell us your thoughts. Also, we are looking for guests to join us. So if you want to hear from a creator or someone from a specific brand, definitely let us know in the comments and we will consider. And that brings me to cue us our end of video rituals. I want to say on behalf of all of us, I thank you to our director and producer, Maul, our editor, Ashley, and our tech director at Open Rail, Shannon. Literally none of this would be possible. We would still be in the cyberspace without all of you. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and activate all of those notifications, um, and follow us across social at Sprout Social. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Go. Go away. Go away. All right, so if you've watched other episodes, you will notice that Rachel, our director of social, is not here. Um, She is on PTO this week and is probably on a beach stroll as we speak or something amazing like that. Good for her. But yeah, Yeah. honestly, like I wish that were me, but it was great. I love all of you, but (laughs) if we could do this on a beach and film, chef's kiss. A little field I mean, trip fi- like sh- episode, yeah. 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 Actually, like, actually, yeah. We need to fly you guys out to here. Come to New yeah. York, and yes. we'll film an episode like on the Met steps or something. Yeah, I love or that. for like, no like particular like reason, unread on the street <gasps> type of vibes. Or Central Park. We'll do like man on the street interviews. Yeah. Put my <laughs> put my journalism Park. degree to use. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>